That was very, very interesting and a serious piece of work um, that you're undertaking. Um, and what I, what I would like to ask you are kind of just add-ons and, and, and a little bit looking into what you, the study you have done on the CFRAM. Um, and the first thing I'd like to ask you is the same question I asked the last uh, group that were in the Department of Rural Affairs, and that is, all of this has been designed and looked at and planned and worked out, I assume, prior to the IPCC report on climate change. Correct. And I'd like to ask you what impact you think that report would have on this. Does it ratchet up the seriousness and the urgency and the investment and the development of what you're trying to do here, which is really interesting and really worthwhile? But I would imagine that that report was like, you know, alarm bells going off. We need to, we need more investment. We need to do more and need to do it so sooner. Uh, and I'd like, you'd like you to, to talk about that. Um, and in line with that, you talk about a one billion investment required to design and construct 118 flood relief schemes. Do you think that investment is nearly enough? Um, do, do, do you think now, knowing what we know, that that investment may need to be ratcheted up? Because you give us um, a, a sort of a... a, a wait, hold on, if I get, get it out here. You give us a, a scenario that there could be a rise in sea levels of... 0.5 of a metre to one metre, uh, resulting in peak flood flows in the rivers of 20 or 20 or 30 per cent. What are you basing that on? Like, where is that coming from? You didn't just pluck it out of the sky. And again, in line with the projections of climate change, could that, cha could that be more serious and could that change? And therefore, would, would you need more of an investment in, in what you're trying to do with the measures to the flood measures, etc.? Yeah, so the last question is kind of in line with that, that if we spend all this money, like it's say a billion, maybe two, can you project from that what we actually might save? Number one, from the destruction and the, um, the loss of both life and property and damage to animals and uh, the cities and towns and everything else that could happen. Um, and number two, what we might save in terms of the penalties and the, 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 the fines that could come hurtling down on top of us from Europe if we fail to reach the Paris targets. Um, and are you concerned that setting a target for 33% of improvement in en energy efficiency in the public sector isn't good enough in light again of the IPCC report? Good Deputy, Mr Buckley. Okay, um, okay um, thank you for that, Deputy. Um, I'll bring my colleague in in a moment on the IPCC um, issue, the, the, the recent report on climate change. But uh, first of all, um, the one billion euro investment uh, is is a good sum of money. We'd obviously, we'd, uh, we'd always welcome more, but it does allow us to put in place a very wide-ranging programme covering a very large portion of the schemes that can be economically justified at this point in time. So the climate change measures, um, the climate change impact will progressively arrive over the coming years. Nobody can say how soon. Um, and as that, that happens, there's undoubtedly um, new investment will be required. The existing schemes and put schemes in place where they're not currently required or are not currently economically justified. Um, the two scenarios uh, I spoke about, the half metre um, sea level rise, a 20% increase in uh, river flow, and then the one metre um, sea level rise with the 30% increase in river flow, uh, have been selected uh, on the basis of the climate change science and the, the best analysis with the experts in Ireland and internationally um, on uh, the, 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 the best assumptions, the best scenarios to take uh, in this context. And I might ask um, Mark Adamson to come in there as to how that has been impacted by the recent UN report um, last week. Thank you very much. Um, we would have based the mid-range future scenarios and the high-end future scenarios, um, the allowances for changes in flows and sea level rise um, based on the science available at the time. Um, when the assessment report 4 came out from the IPC in 2014, um, they would have supported the, the allowances that we had made. 
And the, the, the recent um, 1.5 degree report, which I assume is what you're referring to there, the, the mid-range future scenario actually falls in the middle of the projected range of sea level rise that's projected in the 1.5 degree report, um, with the one metre sea level rise actually being above the projected range with a 1.5 degree global warming, and indeed a 2 point degree global warming where there might be an additional 10 or 20 centimetres. So I think that our, our scenarios that we've used to, to assess our vulnerabilities um, and that we'll use going forwards to ensure that we're designing our flood relief schemes so they can cater for potential changes in future decades, I think they are reasonably robust. I think that's different. Yep. Well, well, just to yeah, I did pick ask up the on some of the other so points. Okay. Yeah. Um, in terms of the, the payback then on the one billion investment or further investment, all of the schemes that um, I've spoken about, the 118 new schemes as well as the existing schemes, have to go through a very rigorous uh, cost benefit assessment and they have to, to cut muster basically uh, in terms of obviously protection of human life um, but also protection of property. So the primary criteria is the residential property that can be protected by any of the schemes. And then you have secondary benefits in terms of uh, the quality of life in communities, agricultural benefits and so on. But each one of the schemes must meet the, the, the strict criteria we've put in place. for the. So there will be a payback, in other words, in excess of the cost we're investing. And can we measure that to, you know, per scheme or overall or approximate? In other words, it would be a very good argument to make for continued increase investment if we can show that each investment saves us in the long run, both financially and um, otherwise. Yeah, um, did you want to come in then? Well, just to say that each scheme individually is assessed in relation to its, its cost-benefit analysis. The benefit-cost ratio must be established and needs to be greater than one. So the case is there that it, it, it's a sensible uh, spending of, of taxpayers' money in terms that we will get a greater benefit than the, the cost invested. And do you have that somewhere written on the 118 schemes, that sort of cost analysis of savings? We do have it. It's in the flood risk management plans, um, which are available online in the um, www.floodinfo.ie website. Um, and it's there in these plans for each and every scheme. OK, thanks very much. Last question was in relation to the 33% target for yeah. the um, public sector. Um, that is an ambitious target. I think it's very good that the public sector is leading the way, that uh, we have a higher target uh, to lead by example than the 20% national target um, for, for, for buildings. What are that? Well, in the short term, I think to reach that by 2020 will be a huge challenge. Um, uh, whether it can be extended really is a, is a question for government and a question for how much funding can be made available and where that is prioritised. Um, the public sector accommodation is a relatively small percentage of the overall uh, energy use in the state, uh, so one has to prioritise where the investment is put. But certainly we would consider 33% a good target, a challenging target. Um, we would be working very hard to lead the way on that. I think we are, um, and I think other public bodies are, are, are working towards that as well. Um, I, I think we need to reach that target first, maybe, before we, we, we extend it. Okay, we're Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Butler.